Hey, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here. So today in this video, I wanted to talk about nine different reasons as to why you may be having bad digestion whilst eating one meal a day. So if this video topic interests you, make sure you watch this video from start to finish. And this is gonna be the most detailed video that I've ever made on this subject. I've talked about it various few other times in some other videos but never to the extent that I'm gonna go into in this video. But before I go into the nine different reasons, the first one is to give a shout out to sponsor this video, which is Clean Machine, which sells some of the highest, cleanest quality fitness nutritional supplements out there that can aid in improving your sports performance, reducing your recovery time after training, aid in weight loss, in muscle growth, and give you a whole host of other benefits as well. If you're interested in this company and this products, I'm going to put some links down below for their website and some coupon codes ranging anywhere from 20 to 30 percent off. So if you're interested in them, you can check out their website and use one of those coupon codes. So now onto the topic of the video. And now onto the topic of the video. And what I first want to say for the things that I'm about to share with you, some of them may apply to you and some of them may not. It's going to vary from person to person. And you may be someone that found that your digestion was good before eating one meal a day and then bad with eating one meal a day. Or you could be someone that already had bad digestion and it's still bad on one meal a day. So it may be that one meal a day is affecting your digestion in a negative way due to some of the reasons that I mentioned, or it may not. But you can be the one to decide that. So the first one can be due to overeating, which I do recommend that you eat enough calories to give your body all of the fuel that it needs to feel really, really good whilst you're in the fastest state with doing one meal a day. And so you can make sure you're getting all of the macro and micronutrients that you need to fuel your workouts if you are working out and help you go in the direction of gaining and maintaining the physique you desire as well and to help you get so many other amazing benefits as well. So I'm not saying that you should go and just massively under eat, but just be very mindful of how much food that you're eating. Because I don't know how much you need to eat, and nobody doesn't, your body knows best, and it's gonna give you some signs whether you should be stopping. And I'm someone that's very in tune with my body, I'm trying to teach people to become in tune with their body. So what I recommend is when you're eating, if you think that you're overeating, and that's affecting your digestion in a negative way, sit down to eat your one meal, don't be on your phone or talking to anyone by have any distractions whatsoever. Don't be rushing your food and just be as present as you possibly can. And just eat your meal, keep eating and eating and eating, and just listen to your body. And what I normally find is with doing this, I'll get to a point where my body just says, no, it doesn't want anything more. It actually comes up as a feeling in my body and then as a thought process. Not necessarily is everyone gonna have that happen, but as you're just being more and more mindful over a period of time, days and days and days, weeks or months, with doing what I'm mentioning consistently, you should be able to get to a similar place that I've got to. So I know when I've got to a point that I'm full. And it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm completely stuffed up into my neck, because if you're stuffed up to your neck or your food's gonna come out of your mouth where you've just eaten so much, then you've definitely overeaten. And another telltale sign is if you feel very tired after eating, then that is another telltale sign if you have overeaten. So it's all about getting to a point where you feel satiated, not overstuffed, where you just don't want to look at food ever again and you just feel awful within your mind and body afterwards. Number two, which so many people do this with all different types of diets out there, and that is drinking liquids with food or soon after food or a short while before eating their one meal a day. You may be thinking, what? A lot of people say drinking liquids with your food actually aids in digestion, and that is complete misinformation. Because what is happening is when you're drinking liquid with food, it is diluting your stomach acid, which you want optimal stomach acid production and not having it diluted whatsoever, because it releases an abundance of different enzymes and other specific things to break down the food as effectively and efficiently as possible. So 
So for that reason alone, you do not want to be diluting down your stomach acid with any liquids whatsoever, whether it's green juice or smoothie or water, coffee. What you want to be doing is make sure that you drink no liquids about 30 minutes before consuming food. And then I wouldn't normally recommend consuming any liquid for about a few hours after consuming your one meal a day. And if you're someone that finds that you get very dehydrated and a huge desire for liquids during your one meal a day, just make sure that you drink a lot of water prior to eating your one meal a day. So you can make sure that you're very, very well hydrated. And then that desire for liquid should go away. And you may just have to be disciplined and say, no, you don't drink any liquids for the time range that I've just mentioned after consuming your one meal a day or with it. And I'm telling you now, so many people that follow this information on any type of diet find time and time again that it resolves all of their digestive issues once and for all. And number three, and this is such a huge issue so many people, is not chewing your food enough. So many people are just shoveling food in, not being mindful at all, and just sort of rushing their food completely. And the whole digestion process starts within the mouth. By breaking your food down with your teeth, by chewing it very, very thoroughly, and then, obviously you swallow it, it goes down within your stomach, your stomach's gonna be able to break it down way, way, way quicker and easier. And what a lot of people aren't aware of is you also get enzymes that are produced by your saliva. So the more you chew, the more saliva is being produced, then the more enzymes are being produced that is going down through your esophagus into your stomach. And then it's just gonna make the digestion of your food way more efficient and the best that it can be. So be as mindful as you possibly can, chew your food until it's pretty much drinkable. And I'm telling you, I used to have digestive issues years and years and years ago, more specifically constipation, and I just used to rush my food so much because I used to be a gamer and all I cared about was gaming all the time, so I just wanted to get the food down as quickly as possible. And then at one point I just became mindful, started chewing my food very thoroughly, and boom, constipation. Gone. And number four is bad food combinations. And I'm gonna list off some of the worst ones that people could possibly do. So say you're eating a variety of all different cooked foods, whether it's meat-based or plant-based or whatever, it doesn't really matter. And then you consume loads of watermelon with it, or just some watermelon, that is so bad. I travel around the world and go to so many different hotels and the buffets time and time again, I see people eating watermelon with loads of different types of cooked foods. And the reason why this is a really bad food combination is watermelon is mostly water. And it wants to go through your digestive system very, very quickly. But what happens is when you consume the cooked food, you are consuming it, putting it within your stomach, and then the cooked food takes a lot longer to be broken down within the stomach. So then the watermelon that's there is sitting there as well. And then it is fermenting. What happens when fermentation happens? It creates alcoholic substances which then cause things such as gas and bloating and brain fog and your energy levels going down and has negative effects on your digestion and so many other effects as well. And a lot of other fruits are not good to mix with cooked food whatsoever. If someone wants to eat fruits, it's best to eat fruits, then wait an hour and then go and eat cooked foods. So it's about listening to your body. And if you're eating certain foods together that you think may be having a negative effect on your digestion due to it being a bad food combination, just experiment. Eat the normal meal that you would, try removing the food, see if the digestive issues go away, and just do what I would call a food elimination diet, but more one with finding out what the bad food combinations are that you're making. So say that you're eating rice and potatoes and meat and so forth, and then you're eating watermelon with it, try not having the watermelon and see if your digestion issues go Away. And what I want to say is that you can look into correct food combining online, but what I'd say is a lot of the food combining that people mention online, I've tested some of it, some of it's true, some of it's not. So you could look into correct food combining and do some experimentation with that if you feel inclined to do so. Number five, you may have a food intolerance or allergy. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, I didn't necessarily have these digestive issues before, it's only happened with one meal a day, and maybe it wasn't happening for you at first whilst eating one meal a day, like it wasn't for me when I was eating one meal a day for around seven months. But then what I 
personally found, is I developed a food intolerance to tempeh. And I was eating loads of it every single day for months and months and months. And what can happen is when you're eating a specific food consistently over a period of time, you can develop a food intolerance to that food or even an allergy. So for me, I had things such as gas and bloating going on from the tempeh. And I was like, okay, I know that it's coming from the food sources I'm eating, but I don't know what food source specifically. So I try removing this food, that food, that food, that food, that food, one different food at a time. And then I found out that it was the tempeh and then I removed it from my diet and the issue went away completely. So for this one, just like the bad food combining, it's about doing food elimination, being as mindful as you can, experimenting, switching some things out and just listening to your body and seeing if you notice any improvements to your digestion due to you removing a specific food from the meal that you're eating. And yeah, obviously just discontinue eating if you notice your digestion is better. If you remove it, you don't notice any difference, put that food back in, try a different food. Number six is not resting whilst you are eating and whilst your body is digesting the food after you have eaten. So if you're someone that's very stressed out and you're eating your one meal a day, even if you're eating it slowly and you're very stressed out, that is gonna have a negative effect on your digestion. And then say an hour afterwards or so, you then go and train or you're just moving around a lot, which is forcing a lot of blood to go into your muscles and away from your digestive organs, that is gonna have a negative effect on your digestion. And there's so many people out there that tell you time and time again, that it is the best to rest after you are eating because then your body can focus most of its energy upon digesting the food and not using a lot of the body's energy for other processes that could then have a negative effect on your digestion. So make sure you just relax after you're eating and whilst you are eating as well. Number six, which earlier I talked a little bit about stomach acid production and how drinking liquids of your food will actually have a negative effect on stomach acid production and digestion. But I'm gonna go into something else which is an issue with people and stomach acid. So many people around the world, this is an epidemic, either have a low stomach acid production or no stomach acid production. Because yeah, it's just not gonna be able to do the digestion process that is done within the stomach as efficiently and effectively as possible. And there can be many different reasons as to why this happens. Someone could have issues with the candida overgrowth or parasitic infestations with specific parasites within the body. It also can be due to nutritional deficiencies, which I have normally found with people that I've coached and helped around the world. One of the main reasons is normally due to specific vitamin and mineral deficiencies. And there can also be other reasons as well. So something that can massively help you is consuming one tablespoon of raw organic apple cider vinegar in eight ounces of water around 30 minutes before your one meal a day. And this will naturally increase your stomach acidity and it will increase the levels of stomach acid production and it will increase the levels of stomach acid that you have within your stomach. And what I'd say is, this is something that is a very cheap and effective way to do it, but it's not necessarily the best for it to go. And what I forgot to mention, which I will add now, is make sure there is raw, organic, unpasteurized apple cider vinegar with the mother in a glass bottle. And if you don't know where to get that from, I'll put links down below for UK, US and worldwide suppliers that can deliver that specific apple cider vinegar to your door. But yeah, it's a bit like putting a band aid on the issue. Instead, yes, it's good to do what I've just mentioned with apple cider vinegar, but you wanna find out the root cause of the issue as well and address that. And like I said, one of the number one reasons that I found that people have issues with stomach acid production is due to mineral deficiencies. So what I would personally recommend is taking one of the most highest quality multivitamin and mineral supplements in the world. And what I wanna say is most of the multinutrient supplements that are sold in the market are full of toxic substances. They do not contain the broadest spectrum of nutrients possible in the most bioavailable forms, which when it comes under the criteria that I'm just mentioning, it is just not going to correct nutritional deficiencies whatsoever. This is why you hear so many people say time and time again, I've tried types of supplements such as the one that I mentioned, didn't get any benefits from it. 
because most people just buy the cheapest one possible and you get what you pay for. So the one I'm going to recommend to you is not the cheapest, but is the best on the market that is a sports certified nutritional supplement that has almost every single different vitamin and mineral and nothing toxic added to it in the most bioavailable forms possible. And this is called Thorn Research's Elite PM and AM. So they have two different bottles, one for the morning and one for later in the day. If you're doing one meal a day, you can consume three from the AM bottle and three from the PM bottle all at once and that's absolutely fine to do. And if you're interested in that, I'll put links down below for UK, US and worldwide suppliers. Number eight, which so many people have issues with this, is having what is known as a compromised gut microbiome. And if you're thinking, what is that? Well, within our gut, we have different strains of bad bacteria and good bacteria. And so many people have had things happen inside their digestive system, such as antibiotics, which is one of the worst things for affecting your gut microbiome in a negative way, and chemicals that are in their food that affect the gut in a negative way, and many other reasons, but antibiotics are one of the worst things for messing up your gut microbiome, because yes, they kill off bad bacteria, but they're also killing off loads of good bacteria as well. And if you do your research into this specific subject, there are specialists that have found that it is not good for that to be happening whatsoever, and it will have a negative effect on your digestion. So first things first, avoid any synthetic antibiotics out there. There's so many different types of natural antibiotics out there. I'm not going to go into any in detail on this video. You can do your research up online. You can just do a quick Google search and find more information on that. But if you're someone that thinks you have a compromised gut microbiome, you can take a high quality probiotic. And not all of them may equal. A lot of them that are sold on the market are actually dead once you've actually bought them and a lot of them don't contain the broadest spectrum of strains and a high bacteria count. So again, a lot of people can buy very cheap probiotics and they're garbage, you're not gonna get the benefits from them. So yes, what I'll be doing is putting links down below for UK, US and worldwide supplies for some of the most highest quality probiotics by Garden of Life that I've used personally for a very long time and that I've seen amazing results time and time again with the people that I've recommended them to that have used them to get so many different benefits such as resolving digestive issues. And with this probiotic, you will want to take the exact amount that is recommended on the bottle. You take it early in the morning, and that's not going to break you out of the fasting state whatsoever. And last but not least is your body is just not producing enough enzymes. Like I said, chewing enough is really going to help to produce specific enzymes from your saliva. And there is many different organs that produce enzymes within the body as well. But the main organ that does is the pancreas. And so many people do not have optimal pancreas health and have it functioning the best of its ability. And when it's not, it's not going to produce an abundance of enzymes which are key for breaking down your food so then you can absorb it efficiently and effectively and then it's just going to have a whole host of negative effects on your health due to not having optimal enzyme production from your pancreas. So what you can do is take a herbal formula which is actually very, very cheap, which is by Christopher's Formulas. And this has a blend of different herbs to actually cleanse your pancreas and also give it specific nutrients and other substances that are found naturally recurring within the herbs to actually get your pancreas to function to the best of its ability. And with this supplement, just read on the bottle how much you need to be taking and just take that amount with your one meal a day. So, I hope this video has helped you as much as possible. Experiment with some of the things that I've just mentioned. See if they can help you resolve your digestive issues. And if you're someone that's had digestive issues and resolved them with eating one meal a day, let us know down below what you personally did to resolve them. And if you'd like me to make any other videos on one meal a day, let me know down below and I'll make them for you as soon as possible. And if you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll get back as soon as possible. I love answering your questions. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Don't give us a thumbs down. And please share this video with anyone else that you think needs to hear about the nine different reasons as to why they may be having bad digestion whilst eating one meal a day. So they could actually possibly learn what's causing the digestive issues with eating one meal a day and find the solutions in this video that could help them resolve.
that issue once and for all. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button down below to receive a lot more videos from me on specific topics such as one meal daily, 16, 8, intermittent fasting, diet, calisthenics, weight loss, and so many other different videos to share you loads of valuable, effective information that can help you go in the direction to achieve the body that you desire and sustain it long term and the energy levels and the fitness levels as well. So if those types of videos and benefits appeal to you, make sure you click the subscribe button down below and you click the bell notification button next to the subscribe button, otherwise YouTube will not notify you of when your videos are uploaded and I have new ones coming almost every single day. So as always, stay fit, stay energetic and go get those gains. Peace.